imagine you and your buddies sitting around and trying to contemplate the notion of what it takes for man to be free? Whenever you sit and think, all right, we're going to write some rules down that are going to govern this land and write them down in such a way that are going to, in your best opinion, foster the highest level of liberty and freedom. That's a difficult proposition. And it's one I don't necessarily agree with. But, you know, if you're going to have something, this one sure does fit the bill, if you will, pun intended, with the Bill of Rights. And the first 10 amendments are pretty amazing, especially the second one, because all the other ones are rested upon the second one. Because without the second amendment, none of the other amendments have any validity. An amendment, the first amendment is Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. And we can already tell just in the first amendment, we have to have permissions to even have a demonstration anywhere. We have to ask permission whenever there is no permission that should ever be granted. If a person has a legitimate grievance to them, they should have the right to voice that to the people that govern them without going to beg them for their permission. It is a travesty. Amendment two, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Amendment three, <laughs> no soldier shall, shall barge into your home and give you an eviction notice. Uh, number four, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Amendment five, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presented or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising the land or naval forces or in the militia, when in actual service of time of war or public danger, nor shall any person be subject to the same offense be twice put in jeopardy or life or limb, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself or deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Amendment 6. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial. That way they can be called guilty as soon as possible, and then the next person can be <laughs> stripped of their innocence. And the Seventh Amendment. In suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, which is uh, pretty soon will be one tank of gas, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall by otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. Amendment 8. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual in punishments inflicted. Amendment nine, the in, the, the in, whatever in the Constitution of, of certain rights. Uh, I lost track uh, again or whatever. Uh, the the right <laughs> shall not be construed to deny or discourage other others retained by. And number ten, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states, or reserved to the states respectively, or to the people, which means the states have the higher power. Of course, we have done away with that too. Boy, we need to go back to our roots, don't we, people? Well, we're obviously having fun today reading the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights, and it is worth some discussion. And it is quite striking to me when we go through these, and that most people don't get together on the 4th of July and read the founding documents, especially the Declaration of Independence, for what the 4th of July means. 
and what it represents. And it represents people risking their life, liberty, and their sacred honor and their lives just to promote the notion that men, when I say men, it includes all of mankind. And that is for us to have and exercise our autonomy, our personal sovereignty, our right to be free. And those rights are diminished greatly as governments get larger around the world, including our own. And to me, I find it sad that we have to list out amendments. It, it is a something that should be so universal and so understood that everyone should be able to say whatever it is they want to say. If you don't like what they say, you don't have to listen. If you don't like what someone is promoting or selling, you don't have to buy it and you don't have to pay attention. As long as people are not infringing upon your liberty, then there is no issue. And that goes for all of the, the amendments when you go look at them. And there would be no amendments, there would be no rights of mankind if we do not have the right to protect ourselves from invaders into our home, from tyrannical governments, from anything that requires self-defense. That is all right. And it is important that people recognize and understand that. What do you say, my dear brother? I think this is an important conversation that should be talked about, not only on the 4th of July, as you said, but I think this is something that I think everyone knows out there when you get together with family and friends, the topic of anything political or what's going on in the mainstream happens to come up almost any time you're around friends, family, or just out and about. And I think that there should be references made to our constitution and our amendments, and we should have a better discussion on an everyday basis of what our rights are and how we can protect them and keep these things going because we get so caught up on these shallow look over here at the pretty girl and the elephant gets disappeared. So we're focused on these small minuscule issues that take up our everyday life, whether it's the price of gas or you know this bathroom issue over here. When we miss the really broad scope of what our country was founded upon, I think that is really the first step of what we need to do. We need to talk about these things on a more daily basis. We need to have more discussions about these things. We need to have a better understanding of how our country came to be and what these men were sitting around trying to protect and defend. We get so caught up on, oh, this bad thing happened because of this gun issue. When we take away the broader scope of the guns were meant to protect us in the first place, that we were meant to have these freedom of speeches, that if you don't like this thing that this other person is saying, it's very easy to walk out of the room or instead of being in this society we live in where everybody's so triggered so easily, to actually listen to somebody else's point of view and to see where they're coming from and maybe get to the bottom of why they feel something instead of just saying, oh, I don't believe you and I need to walk out of the room. I think we should have a greater discussion on why do you feel this way? What makes you think this way? Why do you think that this is your right when your rights are actually here. You do have the freedom to say what you want and you shouldn't be censored. You shouldn't just say, oh, well, I don't want to listen to you. I think people should have a discussion and say, okay, I see where you're coming from and I see what you're trying to say or I don't exactly see what you're trying to say. Maybe give me a little bit more context on why you do feel this way. And then maybe we can build a better country and society because I think these men sat around and talked about these issues. Well, I mean, I know they did because that's where we came to this consensus of these bills of rights and constitution and the Declaration of Independence. They had these discussions and they took this knowledge and information and they didn't always agree. Of course they didn't. When you get a group of people in a room, they never agree. They weren't all like minds thinking together. They had a basic premises of what they wanted and these are what they agreed on for us as a country and us as a people. And I think we should respect their decisions and their rights and then go a step farther. And in today's time, think about what are our rights and how do we keep our rights going and how do we protect ourselves 
and the freedoms that were already allotted and not get our freedoms taken away slowly, slowly, like the entropy of the world. Well, I love that. And in broader context, it's just like, you know, Benjamin Franklin saying uh, to the lady, uh, you know, you got a republic uh, if you can keep it, you know, something along those lines. And I would say that we have lost our country. And it's pretty evident when you just look over the Bill of Rights, when you see that you, you have to ask permission to have a simple protest. You have to have permission to do all sorts of uh, things. There's violations of the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, uh, all of the amendments, really, non nonstop. And we have and, government permission to do what we're doing right now. Yeah, it's really kind of crazy. And what's sad is if you look look at the human condition and you look at the United States of America and you think, God, what a great experiment. And then to see, especially from World War II until today, how we have trampled on the rights of people. When every 4th of July, I think, is a day that we should just sit back for some moments and go, what is our country now and where are we going? How, and if we're not going down the, the path of individual liberty and freedom, how do we get back on that path? And because most people think, oh, we live in this great capitalist country, when in fact we do not. And everything goes in cycles. Capitalism is fantastic until it gets so big with so large companies end up controlling the whole dynamic of the political system. And in turn squashes the individual's ability to do and be more with their own life. And what I really, to go further with that is, most people now, they go to college to go to work for somebody else. There's very few people that think and act as entrepreneurs. I wanna be self-dependent. I want to be, I want to produce a service or a product that can sustain my life and my family and do well. We have lost that to a very large degree in this country. And I think that is sad. And, and in turn, we've exchanged our autonomy for a fascist uh, setup in this country because we are governed primarily by very large corporations. And a lot of times those corporations have nefarious uh, plans and various actions that they do against our individual freedom. And it is important for us to sit and reflect upon this and have open and honest discussions without any other bias uh, or without any sort of uh, anything other than honest debate. Like, I'm not trying to push something on you. I just want to pull down what is happening so I can find truth for myself. So I can look at it the current state of our country and where we live, and go, huh, how do I navigate this? I mean, there are so many issues within each of us already that we have to navigate. And then we get bombarded with these, all these other outside forces that make it even more difficult for us to navigate our own lives. That is uh, an infringement upon our freedoms and our personal liberty. And it is an assault against each of us. So I hope that we can all come together and have discussions like this. I, I have friends and family, much like you, that hardly ever have even looked at the Declaration of Independence or even read the Bill of Rights. They don't even know what the country stands for. They don't even know what they stand for. Which, to me, I, on a side note, I think the best forms of government are city-states where there are no states of Texas or Louisiana or anything else. We just have city states. I think that's the best way to do anything. The smaller, the better. And to know where your food comes from, to know where everything comes from, to know who you're doing business with. I think that is a, a much better system. And what is a really good system right now is for me and my brother at the Mystics of Texas to be able to come together and have these wide ranging discussions that are beneficial for all of us.
So thanks. Well, I'm very glad to be here, and I really like a lot of what you said. I think that this city state model is a very good model. I think that it needs to be reworked in today's internet global economy society. But I think we can go a step farther on everything, like our, where our food comes from. I think that's very important. Most people have no idea where food comes from. They go to the grocery store and they think, oh, well, milk comes from a carton. They have no idea how milk is produced. They have no idea where bread is produced. And then when you said something about the nefarious purposes of these big corporations, I think that's one thing that most people make a mistake on is that we do not live in a capitalistic society. We live on a bastardization of the capitalistic system. We live in a system where these big companies are allowed to buy and rent politicians for their own purposes, where they can get laws pushed in. So it makes it harder for you to understand where your food comes from. I mean, we can just look back at these documents from one company that wanted to produce something to put into other people's bodies. And they set aside 75 years for these documents to come out. Like that is too much pull for a corporation to have. We should step back and say these corporations now are so big that they need to be held at a different standard. This lobbyization system that we have is the bastardization of capitalism. Then I hear a lot of people talk, especially in today's time, of, oh, well, socialism is better, you know, freedom, you know, you get everybody to pull their wealth. And I want to talk to these people and say, all right, when you go out to eat at a restaurant, do you tip everyone exactly the same, no matter how good their service is? Because if you don't do that, then you live by more of a capitalistic system that if you tip or if you did very well, then I will tip you accordingly. And if I did not get good service, I will tip also accordingly. But if you actually truly believe in the system of socialism or communism, then you should do everyone equally. You should actually go out and practice what you preach. And I think that's another big problem with society that we live in is we're told that we need to go to this model over here, but nobody actually practices it. They don't even know what that model is. They talk about communism and they've never even read the Marxist papers. They've never read any of that capitalistic or socialistic material out there. They have no idea what the concept of anything means. I like to go back to the state of religion. You believe in these things because you were told to believe in it or your mom and dad believed in it or the region that you grew up believes in it. And they hold these things so dear to their heart without actually exploring anything. There's so many people I see that have, oh, America t-shirts on, but they're not made in the United States. They're made in a sweatshop in China or Indonesia where they use slave labor to make those goods. They have freedom all over their shirt, but they're using their freedom by enslaving other human beings to make that shirt. Is that a good representation of what freedom is? Is that something that you should want to do? Or should you want to go back to a smaller system of government, city-states where your goods are produced somewhat locally, where you actually know somebody that's making a shirt, or you know somebody that's producing your food, or you know somebody, you have a relationship with people in the community, not that you have all 400 or 700 online friends and you talk to nobody, and especially when people say, oh, well, I have, I have friends and, and we talk. And then you ask them, okay, well, what's something you talk about? And there's this blank space right there. They have Crickets. no idea. Yeah. It's like going around and asking people in today's society, what is a woman? Like the whole face shuts down. Like they can't even have an opinion on it because they're afraid that they might offend someone. When we live in a society where, oh, being offended is the greatest, of, you, you can't do that. That's, that's terrible. You can't offend someone. Well, how do you ever grow as a person and grow in your own thinking without being offended? I absolutely like when somebody offends me because then it gives me a chance to think around the problem. I might not agree with what you said, but I'm willing, just like the socialist or communist system, do you tip everyone fairly? Do you live by what you actually think in your head or what you think you think? Or do you not? Because... People don't understand. 
will allow me to offend most of y'all. <laughs> I would love to be offended. I look forward to it. Most, of, most people think that we live in a democracy. That is not true. We do not live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic, which is a form of democracy, but it is not democracy. And democracy is the worst form of government ever. It is mob rule. It is the suppression of minority. It is, if you are in the 25% that feel something should not be that way, it's infringing upon your right somehow, well, the democracy tramples all over you. Everybody gets all excited. Oh, we live in the greatest country. We live in a democracy. No, we don't. We do not, people. This is not a democracy. This is a republic. You know, we all had to go through the propaganda of uh, our Pledge of Allegiance. We, we don't say at the end uh, or say during the pledge the democracy in which it stands. We say the republic in which it stands. Duh. <laughs> it's just like, come on, people. Uh, and if we don't know the, the slightest thing about our forms of government and how it operates and how uh, the tentacles of all these corporations have put a stranglehold and brainwashed the masses into uh, all sorts of things that they don't even realize that they're brainwashed in, boy, we got a bad state of affairs. And I hope that our little diatribes here, our rants, resonate with you a little because this is the 4th of July. This is the celebration of uh, the sacrifices to for humanity to do its best to try to find some semblance of freedom and liberty. And through the decades, we have continuously screwed that up. And what's the solution? Well, the solution is knowledge. It's understanding. It's tolerance. It's having discussions, real discussions, to find what is true. And without that, and without at the risk of being offended, we get nowhere. We must get offended. We must live outside of our comfort zones. We must expand our thought process. We must come together in small and large groups to talk about all these wide-ranging subjects that are in the long category of uh, topics uh, in the mystics of Texas and beyond. And so I just want to thank y'all for joining us and staying around this far. I hope y'all enjoyed us uh, doing our fun performance of the Declaration of Independence and Bill of Rights today. So with that, Mr. Schmidt, I believe I am finished. I have one last thing when you were talking about the form of government in which we live in. Uh, thank you for pointing that out because I'm sure many people do not know that. One further thing I would like to say is I hear people say that, oh, they're proud to be an American or they live in America. For everybody out there, you do not live in America. America covers two whole continents, North and South America. You live in the United States of America. So if you are Mexican, Canadian, Guatemalan, or any of those other countries that live in the continent of North and South America, you are technically an American. So this goes out there just to remind everyone that you live in one country in the America. It's called the United States. And with that, I hope you enjoyed our conversation and have a good day.